Amen. I, I don't uh, typically preach messages that are like all, you know, relative to the times, you know, specifically. I don't, I, I try not to do that anyway, but I knew that I really wanted to preach something tonight on the whole mob mentality and all the riots and everything that we're seeing. And, and so I had something in mind of a title that was like rioting, looting, and mob mentality. And I, was, I knew what, kind of some areas, I, some directions that I was going in the Bible, and I was trying to think through exactly how I wanted to present that. And I'm thinking about the rioting and the, and the different mobs. And as I began to study that, I began to hate mobs more and more. <laughs> and, uh, and so I came up with this title, and I'll explain that here in a minute, but I, and it might sound a little childish, but uh, I think it's appropriate. I hate wicked mobs. I hate wicked mobs. You say, Amen. I don't think anyone in here would say that, but some people say, you're not supposed to hate. Well, nobody told David that. <laughs> All right, that's where, I, that's where I got the title from, actually, is his writings, okay? And, and so what do I mean by mob? You might think when I say mob, uh, you know, typically you think capital M, mob, you're thinking about the mafia. It's kind of a nickname for the Italian-American mafia. And you start studying some of that out, which, by the way, is alive and well today. <laughs> Maybe not to the same extent in the public's eyes as it was in, like, Frank Sinatra's days, you know, Frank Sinatra, I heard, has uh, had a lot of FBI uh, looking into his, his, his actions because he always hung out with mafia bosses and stuff like that. And, and uh, in interesting study if you ever get into that. But the mob, you're like, where does that word come from? Actually, did you know this? The word mob is just shortened for, did anybody know? Mobile. <laughs> or mobile, you know, this mobile is just a shortened form. So I guess the principle is that these guys were like, you know, in action. And you think about a mob coming at you, what you're talking about, a group of people who are coming after you with the intention to do something wicked, usually. It doesn't have to be that for the word mob to, to actually fit, but typically it's with a wicked uh, <clears throat> motive. <clears throat> and the Bible doesn't actually use the word mob. Now, modern versions do. And, and excuse me, I'm not trying to quote any modern versions, but uh, I want to show you some words that the Bible uses uh, to, to start off with as introduction. And the, the, KG, the King James uses a lot of great word pictures. I love the, the, the old English. I mean, even if I didn't think the King James is just the inspired you know, word of God and, and the words are there just the way God intends for us to have it in the English language, even if I didn't believe that, I would still believe the beauty of the King James could not be beaten. It cannot be paralleled by anything else, and I would still love it. Amen. right? But I, I have a greater appreciation of it than just that. Uh, but the King James Bible, just the word pictures that it uses, some of the language is just so beautiful. And, uh, and the language has been dumbed down since Shakespeare, Shakespearean times in the 1600s, by the way. So 1611 was actually, I think, the height of the English language. And it'll never probably be back as beautiful as it was at that time. But some of these word pictures, you know, are, are interesting. So it doesn't use the word mob, but here are some words that it uses. It, it, uh, David calls it the congregation of evildoers. And here's what he says. What did David feel about mobs? He says, in Psalm 26, 5, he says, I have hated the congregation of evildoers Amen. and will not sit with the wicked. Right. I don't want to have any part with that wickedness. Amen. Amen. He says this uh, in Psalm 64, he calls it the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Boy, that's nice language, isn't it? The insurrection of the workers of iniquity. He says, hide me. From the secret, secret counsel of, wicked, uh, of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. In Ezekiel, God tells uh, Ezekiel that he's sending a mob, a wicked mob, that's going to come and it's, it's God's judgment upon, the peop uh, on, upon his people, who are supposed to be his people anyway. And so he tells Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 16, 40, 41, he says, They shall also bring up a company against thee. That's the mob he's talking about, a company against thee, and they shall stone thee with stones and thrust thee through with their swords, and they shall burn thy houses with fire and execute judgment upon thee in the sight of many women, and I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot, and thou also shalt give no hire anymore. Now, God allowed this wicked mob to go into uh, Jerusalem there and to set the houses on fire. Aren't you glad? We, I mean, I, I understand that some destruction was done even here in Kansas City 
through this whole mob mentality thing that's going on and, and a certain amount of graffiti and destruction and looting was done. But there are some parts of the country right now that are literally on fire. If, 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 I, if I'm understanding the picture, you know, the, the media, which I usually don't take their word for it, but it seems to me like they're setting places on fire, tearing things down, burning it up and all that kind of stuff. So were these people okay that God sent to go do that? No, they're wicked. You know what he does after they get done punishing Israel for 70 years? He destroys them, right, because they're wicked. And he, and he used them for his own uh, purposes, but they were a wicked mob as well. He says, I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot, right? So he was pouring out his wrath on his people, right, and those people that claimed to be his people, but... Uh, but ultimately, the mob got punished uh, later as well. He also calls it this in, uh, in Matthew 26, when we see a mob, basically. Again, I'm using that uh, common word, today's word, but uh, Jesus or, or, the, or Matthew calls it a great multitude. And he says that they had swords and staves when they came to arrest Jesus. It says, And while he yet spake low, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and elders of the people. And all throughout the Bible, we see these, these groups. You know, I just mentioned a few right there, different names that are associated with them. But basically, they're a bunch of wicked mobs is what he's talking about. And so I'm going to share you three stories from the Bible and explain a different ways uh, we might see these mobs. And the first one uh, was already read there in Genesis 19, 1 through 11. Uh, if you just want to go... Stay there. If you're, uh, if you're not already there, turn over to Genesis 19 again. And uh, I'll read some of this here in a second. But uh, the first group I want to talk about is a mob that's motivated by an immediate urge to gratify the flesh. And so you get this group of people. They all have similar passions, similar desires, and they just get together and they say, Hey, if you do it, I'll do it. And they just go together and they're just in on this wickedness. And so this would lead to such wicked things like gang rape, uh, just this violence where they'll just go into the city they'll drag somebody out of a car or, or a truck and they begin to just beat them up. Even old people, have you ever heard of these guys that would just take an old person, didn't do anything wrong to them, and just beat them up and, and actually kill them? What would cause them to do that? Well, there's some kind of gratification that they're getting from this. And oftentimes there's this gang uh, mob mentality where they're all just running around like wild men, just doing whatever pleases them. And that is uh, no doubt wicked. Notice in this passage that we uh, read in Genesis 19. Notice this. It was at night. Right. And there came two angels at, uh, to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in. He's like, Man, there's some wicked stuff goes on at night around here. You need to get inside. And I pray, uh, be, uh, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he, Lot, pressed upon uh, them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast and did bake unle uh, unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, so really late at night probably, before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round both uh, compass house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? I mean, there's no doubt about it. This wickedness is taking place at night. And, uh, and it's so interesting to think about the, how many times the Bible talks about the wicked stuff that goes on at night. Basically, in nightlife, right? If you're not sleeping or working the night shift, right, at, at you know, when it's late hours of the night, uh, probably there's nothing really anything good for you out there you know there's nothing good right. certainly don't want to turn on the tv or anything like that right. uh you'd be better off just going to sleep because it seems like that's when the scum of the earth just kind of crawl out <laughs> you know maybe they've been sleeping all day or something i don't know and they go out and they do their wickedness at night and uh and so you just got to you know lock your doors go to sleep 
<laughs> right, whenever that kind of stuff's going on. And so it's night. I find that to be interesting. And then we see the old and the young people are all gathered together. Now, it should be, God designed it this way, that the older should teach the younger how to do right, how to act right. But then you got older people that are actually instigating this stuff, right? Older people that are reprobates, wicked, and what do they do? They recruit these young people, they warp their minds, they deceive them into thinking all this wickedness is, is good for them, and then they get involved in it, and then you get all this wickedness together. And they say, well, I watched some of these videos of people out looting and all that. They're all young people. Yeah, there's a lot of old people behind this. A lot of big money behind this, no doubt. You know, I'm not getting into all the different conspiracy theories out there, but you know that there's some old, you know, wealthy people out there with greedy intentions who are, who are helping some of this to take place the way that it is, right? right. So you know, old people are supposed to be teaching the young people how to not do this stuff and how to be sober-minded and how to live uh, uh, good lives, but, but they don't do that. And so uh, this is often what we see and in, in, this, in this text also. Look at verse 9. How about that? They get mad when they're judged for wanting to do something wicked. <laughs> verse 9, he says, And they said, Stand back. And they said, Again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they press sore. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, they pressed sore upon the man even lot and came near to break the door. You see this just wicked mentality of just saying, you know, how dare you tell me what I'm doing is wrong? You know, now I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> you, know, you know, so let's just say somebody's going by one of these mobs when they're looting and, and beating people up, rioting and all this, and they say, hey, get out of here. You don't need to be doing this. What are they going to probably do? Turn around and beat that person up yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've heard a lot of places where, you know, I've, I remember when we were in Oklahoma City, we worked on the bus route. And we'd go into these really rough neighborhoods. I'm talking gunshots and people doing drugs. I mean, you're just kind of like walking past them to go talk to the kids and recruit them for the, for the <laughs> church bus, right? And so we lived in these, uh, we went sometimes into these uh, really bad neighborhoods. And for the most part, you know, I didn't ever feel like they were going to bother me. You know what? I'm not going to cause any problems. They don't care. I'm not call, You know, I'm just there. In fact, a lot of times they kind of respect you. <laughs> You're saying, "Hey, I'm just a preacher, and I'm just wanting to give gospel, or whatever." A lot of times they respected you. But to every person that I know that ever got beat up in one of these uh, uh, communities where they're just, you know, it just seems like they just got so many wicked intentions or whatever. All of these, all the times that they got beat up, it was because they confronted these people. And as soon as they start telling them that what they're doing is wrong. Then the, they got violent, right? Well, I'm not suggesting that we don't ever t confront evil because we have to confront evil. But look how mad people get whenever you tell them what they're doing is wrong, you know. And so, uh, and so every time that's what it was. And so I learned just not to, not to make eye contact, too much eye contact anyway, <laughs> and not to engage in those people that are doing uh, wicked things. And that was just how I was able to just, you know, get right in there and talk to the kids and give the gospel and all that and never be harmed. But I'm telling you, once you do try to take a stand, once you do try to protect your stuff, well, how about this? And this is the, what happens in the mentality of somebody who's just overcome with this immediate urge. They just got to gratify the flesh and they're so worked up. There's a mob mentality. I mean, look, there's been uh, gang rapes happen in the middle of the day. Sure. I know I was saying the wickedness happens at night. It usually does, but sometimes it overcomes somebody in the day. And people standing by and they don't even know what to do, right? Because these people are so uh, just brazen that they're able to just do that kind of wickedness and think that nothing's going to happen to them because they're just so impassioned. They have this, this desire to do wickedness. It's just the lust of the flesh, and so they do that. And so, uh, so, so anyway, what we, if you notice there in verse 11, even when they're smoted with blindness, it says, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Now, are they on the inside or the outside? They're on the outside. So why are they even looking for the door? They're still trying to get in. <laughs> They've been smoted with blindness. And you know, when I read that, I think in my mind about this picture that I saw 
where these guys are they're looting and they're and they're doing all this stuff and the police officers are standing there with shields and they've got mace like pepper spray right and they're spraying it directly in these guys eyes and they're still cussing at them and yelling and all this kind of stuff and i think that's what happens when this uh, uh just lust of the flesh just overcomes somebody and they enter into this mob mentality and we see it we're seeing it now i mean it's it's wicked now, am i saying everybody that's protesting and everybody who who uh who doesn't like what happened and thinks that this police ought, ought to go to jail i mean i guess he is in jail right and uh and am i saying that they're they're wrong no i, I believe that they're right you know i don't know all the details but everything that i've seen uh, that officer needs to be judged as, as strictly as, you know, they can throw the book at him. And so, uh, so I'm not at all saying that, but I'm saying that these people that are taking advantage of this to just fulfill the lust of the flesh and break windows down <laughs> and, and burn places and beat people up, I mean, that's just wickedness. They're just lust. That's just a lustful, just wanting to gratify the flesh one way or another. And, you know, it's interesting, I was thinking about this, and it really this is where I was going to go with the message at one point. I took a lot of different turns with this, but one point I was going to go with the message is this. You know, what is the motivation? You know, and I'm trying to trace it all back and say, what is the motivation for some people doing the things that they are? And I came up with this, self-love. Self-love. And then I took it a step further, and I thought this. Really, I'm trying to think of any wicked thing that anybody could do that's not motivated in self-love. And I put a, fa uh, a post on Facebook about that, and somebody, first thing that they said was, well, I got you. I mean, they didn't say it like that, but I got you. Suicide, that's not self-love, that's actually self-hate. And I thought, you trace it back to somebody who commits suicide, what's the purpose of them committing suicide? Probably, woe is me, I wish my life was better. Right. Which is what? Self-motivated, they love themselves. In fact, if you say you don't love yourself, you're calling God a liar because God said no man there's no man that doesn't love himself and nourish himself and take care of himself. So the way we keep out of sin is to stop gratifying the flesh and say, you know what? I need to love others as I love myself. Amen. We all love ourselves. You can say, oh, no, no, I don't love myself. Yes, you do. <laughs> you love yourself. We all love ourselves, okay? But what we need to do is live our lives loving other people Amen. like we love ourselves. Hey, you're going to make sure you get fed every day. Well, make sure your family gets fed. Make sure other people get fed. <laughs> You know, you're going to make sure you have the things that you need. Well, help other people to have what they need. And, and you know, you're glad that you received the gospel and that you got saved. Make sure other people hear the gospel Amen. and they get saved. I mean, this is that's what love is. And this is how we stay out of sin is just not always thinking about ourselves and gratifying our our flesh. Okay, so uh, but that's where it happens when these people just become these uh, these wicked mobs. And I think about that and I get furious. Who can read Genesis 19 and not be mad and not say, I hate these wicked moms? Yeah. In fact, I read that and I kind of hate Lot too. <laughs> what are you thinking? You know, but the Bible calls him a righteous man, so I'll leave him alone. <laughs> but, uh, but look, these guys that would do this for the most part. Now, any of us could probably fall into that. We get into the lust of the flesh. You know, I remember as a little kid, and not all, not lust of the flesh isn't always about sexual gratification. We know that, okay? Uh, I remember as a little kid uh, just having this desire to destroy stuff. Maybe every kid goes through that. I don't know. And I remember a, a friend and I went to this junkyard. And I actually didn't think I was doing anything wrong, but I was throwing rocks. I like to play baseball, right? So I'm, I'm trying, working on my pitching, my, my fastball, and I'm throwing rocks, and we're in this junkyard, and I'm busting out, like, headlights and stuff like that. And we're just, we're just you know, it's just fun to destroy stuff. You ever had an opportunity? Sometimes you got to go to a carnival or something, and you'll pay money to actually take a baseball bat and beat up a car or something like that. And it just seems like fun. It's, a, it's, it's fulfilling a lust of the flesh. And so I remember doing that as a little kid, and it didn't strike me how – that I was damaging property that somebody was going to get money for. And actually what I was doing was wicked, right? But my friend said, hey, let's do this. This will be fun. And so I did it. And that's how the mob mentality goes. You see somebody saying, hey, you want that? Let's go get it. And then, you know, it's kind of like Amnon had a friend, right? <laughs> you want that? You want her? Go get her. And then this mob mentality takes place. And so well, the best thing we could do is like David say, hey, I don't even want to have company with those people. Somebody's trying to do wickedness and they're fulfilling the lust of the flesh. I'm out of here, right? Because I know that I'm human and I might be tempted to, to uh, give in to that. So right. stay away from those kinds of things. Usually the people behind it are just the lowest of the low, the scum of the earth. 
just trying to fulfill, probably reprobates. You know, we know the ones in Genesis 19 reprobate. Just trying to fulfill the desires of the flesh, uh, overcome with all manners of wickedness, right? And so uh, uh, that's the one obvious group of people that we would say would be a wicked mob. Number two is this, a mob for hire. A mob for hire, organized crime. Now, some of that's going on right now. I guarantee I already mentioned that a little bit. You know, some of these guys, I've heard rumors. I don't know if it's true or not. I've heard rumors like they're just uh, offering people certain things to bus people into this, these parts of the uh, different neighborhoods and say, hey, go out there and loot and do all these kinds of things. We'll take care of you. I, I read this. I know, look, like I said, you can't trust everything you read, but I read something put out by Antifa. Am I saying that right? Antifa. And they put out this thing of basically an advertisement saying, hey, we're looking for people that'll go and loot and do all this stuff. We'll, you know, we'll take care of you. We'll pay you X amount of money. And if you get thrown in jail, we've got lawyers that'll help bail you out and all this kind of stuff. And if that's true, like I don't know, but I'm assuming I'm, I certainly wouldn't, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. So I wouldn't put it past a, a lot of these people that are doing this, basically just mobs for hire. You know, just thugs that just say, hey, yeah, I'll take it. What, you're going to feed me some pizza? That, that'd be good. I'll, I'll go. Oh, I get whatever I want out of this store, right? Just put me in front of the most expensive stores, and I'll go get whatever I want. And that's the only reason they're doing it is because it's just, it's just a mob for hire. Look at Acts chapter 17. There's another example, okay, that fits this description. Acts chapter 17. A mob for hire. Again, the King James paints such poetic word pictures. I love it. And it talks about this mob that it calls lewd fellows of the baser sort. Isn't that a great phrase? Lewd fellows of the baser sort. Let's read Acts 17, uh, starting verse 1. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Amphipolis in Apolli Ap <laughs> pronounced these right earlier, Apollonia. They came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen, uh, and, uh, risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed... And consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people." You see, these guys, they just couldn't stand that Paul, they, they just hated that Paul was preaching the gospel. And this analogy, in fact, I'm recommending this uh, right now. If you haven't heard, uh, Pastor Anderson just preached uh, two series on this last Sunday. And by the way, I picked out this message before I heard those men. <laughs> this last Sunday, part one, part two, a.m., p.m., and he preached basically on what's going on right now with the rioting and everything. Anybody already heard that? It's pretty good. Pretty, you, you, <laughs> I, I recommend it. I think it, what he said, I really, I really enjoyed the points that he made on that. And uh, somewhere in there, he made this connection. He said, you know, he's talking about people being persecuted, people being oppressed, and you don't know what it's like. And then he started talking about how they went out soul winning that day. And like in 15 minutes, they had all this big old group of police on them trying to stop them from preaching the gospel. <laughs> and yet you got people rioting, burning houses down and doing all this stuff. And they're just like, well, we can't do anything. But you get someone out there preaching the gospel and it's like, oh, we got to stop them. <laughs> right. And it's just, you know, and I don't know that that's not necessarily going to happen in every, you know, in every town that you go into. But certainly there are some people that just get so just enraged because you love Jesus and because you preach the gospel yeah. and because you're against the sin yeah. and they get so upset at you that they'll do anything to shut you down. And so sometimes, you know, in this case, so they hired this mob, these lewd, these lewd fellows of the baser sort just to give them some sort of payment, I guess. It doesn't actually say that, uh, but it's implied that they got to them, these lewd fellows, Certainly there was some kind of motivation. So these are the ones that will usually just the greedy thugs caught up in the wrong crowd. These are like the mafia that I was talking about earlier, you know, organized crime. You know, you just give us the money, 
Hey, we'll do whatever you want to. Starts in, in grade school. Hey, I'll give you a dollar if you put that tack on the teacher's seat. <laughs> oh, a dollar? Sounds good. Put the tack on the teacher's seat, got his dollar, right? Later on, you know, the, you got the, uh, uh, somebody saying, you know, hey, I'll pay you $1,000. Go steal that car, you know, bring me the car. A lot of these mafia guys, by the way, if you read where they got started, they started in crime by stealing cars. I don't know what it is about stealing cars, but that's how they got started. And you go steal this car, right? We'll give you $1,000. Next thing you know, hey, man, you smuggle in that cocaine from Mexico, and we'll give you a million dollars. And, I mean, it just it's all just this filthy lucre that they're, that they're craving. And that can happen in all different types of ways. Hey, that can happen in uh, independent Baptist preachers. A group of guys feeding off each other. I've heard a lot of stories where it's all motivated by greed. Next thing you know, hey, they'll, they'll allow false gospels to be preached and all kinds of things because of the love of money. we got to be uh, careful to stay away from those kinds of people and people that would try to pay you, bribe you, give you gifts or whatever it is so that you'll preach what they want you to preach. We don't want to be part of that. We want to stay away from any organized crime. Mobs for hire. Okay, number three, look at Acts 19. Acts chapter 19, so we're talking about these wicked mobs, okay, and some of them are motivated by just this immediate urge to gratify the flesh. Some of them are just motivated by the money because they're, they're paid, you know, to go do these wicked things, and they'll do anything for money. Then there's this group right here. This is the group that is incited by fear-mongering tactics and propaganda. Are we seeing that with what's going on today? Fear-mongering tactics and propaganda. You say something long enough, you get enough people to believe it, you get them to start being afraid, and next thing you know, you can get them to do whatever you want them to do. And so a lot of times we see this with the social media, with television, Hollywood stars. These are like spokespeople for the media, really, right? They just, you know, they're all watching you, they all love you, why don't you tell them, you know, whatever the new propaganda is of the of the month. And so uh, they tell them this, and uh, and some of them profit off of the fear-mongering. And uh, some of them, they have a vested interest in getting you to forget all reason and just live your life in fear. And I get so tired of this. You know, a lot of times I see uh, a lot of older folks who are just glued to the TV because maybe health or whatever, and they can't get around like they used to. And so they find themselves kind of just glued to the recliner, flipping through channels and watching the news. And I'm thinking, man, that's the worst thing they could do because now they're just feeding just constantly in fear, constantly worried about what the media is telling them to worry about and, uh, and constantly all this. But, you know, that will move multitudes of people to do crazy things. And actually, that's kind of what's going on today, too. You know, some people just jumping out there saying, we got to do something, right? And it's just this motivation by the fear and the propaganda uh, that's going on. Did I read that yet? I didn't read it. Chapter 19, let's go to verse 21. Chapter 19, verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the Spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Arist Arist Erastus, uh, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And at and the same time, sorry, I got my little, little uh, font Bible here. At the same time arose no small stir about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, all right, this is a wicked man that incited violence inside of these, this mob. He is a silversmith, and he made silver shrines for Diana. He brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, Ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone in, at Ephesus, but almost throughout all of Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Amen. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be said at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia in the world worshipeth. Here it's all about money, the love of money. Hey, you know, 
these guys need to stop because I'm not going to be able to make a living off of this wickedness. And so they need to keep quit preaching about my wickedness. And so they must be stopped. <laughs> right? This is what's going on here. Whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they had heard these things, all right, now they've been incited, you know, to, to form this mob uh, with this fear-mongering tactics and propaganda. And they, uh, uh, and they heard these sayings. They were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught, uh, caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, uh, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not uh, adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused. And the more part knew not whereof they were come together. And this how how it is. I mean, you try to read what's going on, you name it. COVID-19, you know, uh, the, whatever's going on right now with uh, Black Lives Matter, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, and, you know, you talk to somebody, if you were to go on the streets in the middle of this chaos and ask people what they're doing and what they're standing for, they're so confused. They don't know. They've just been incited unto this violence, into this riot uh, thinking because it's what they've been told. And you get a president of the past, you know, the last president that was in, and he got up there, and he really started a whole bunch of this stuff, too, with talking about the racism that's in our country, and he's kind of turning people against each other. And I'm not going to say our current uh, government's any better. I'm just saying that as a whole, people are hearing that the race, there's so much racism out there, and there's so much hate, and then so uh, all this fear-mongering propaganda causes them to go out there, and they're so confused. They don't even know what's going on. You know, they don't even know uh, whatever. They're just believing whatever the media is telling them at the time. And it's so crazy. Look, here's what it says. Verse 33. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with his hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Can you imagine Two hours. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Reminds me of whenever I was at camp and I was the lifeguard. And, uh, and I started this. I knew better. I've dealt with kids long enough. I know this. Don't ever get a chant started. Right? And I started just joking around. I'm the lifeguard and I'm walking over there and I'm like, we want to swim. We want to swim. And they all started just chanting, we want to swim. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. And everyone's like, good job. Because now you got this big mob of angry kids. We want to swim. We want to swim. I'm like, hey, it's still 20 minutes. You guys have to wait out here. And I go in to get dressed and they're like, we want to swim. We want to swim. And it's just like little kids. Great is Diana. <laughs> Great is Diana. Right? Because they've just been inside. They don't even know any better. They're just confused. They don't even know why they're there. You know, they're gathering people. Hey, you need to grab him. Now, why are we grabbing him? I'm not really sure. One person said one thing. Another person said another. But they're confused. <laughs> they don't even know what's going on. All they know is, hey, mob mentality. All these other guys are, are, are chanting, great is Diana. Great is Diana. Great is Diana. <laughs> right? Somebody gets up, whatever the cause is. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Of course they matter. I don't understand what the, what the deal is. No, don't you know what's going on? Right? Oh, man, graffiti and all kind of profanity, busting out windows, doing all this kind of stuff. I'm like, you don't even know what you're protesting, it seems like. Because those people that own those businesses, they didn't, you know, <laughs> what, are you, what are you gaining by destroying their stuff? I just see this mob mentality, and it's so wicked. It just makes me so mad. And so they're, they're, just, they're just enraged for one reason or another, whether it's just the, the gratify the lust of the flesh whether it is uh, somebody who has just paid them off and organized them and they're doing it for money, or whether somebody just, they just listened to the fear-mongering and the propaganda, evil mobs, man, and the mob mentality, just people, wicked people feeding off of each other. You know, you say, well, don't you think Black Lives Matter? Of course, uh, for the most part, Black Lives Matter. For the most part, White Lives Matter. I just recently came to this conclusion. I, in fact, in a sermon I was preaching on uh, Wednesday, I wrote in my notes, all lives matter. And then I said, wait a minute, that's not really necessarily true. Because there's a lot of people in the Bible who are scum of the earth, who God says, they're destined for hell. Yeah. 
A lot of people in the, in the Bible, God talks about these people, and he calls them dogs. Yep. He calls them pigs. Right. And he says, you know, hey, I never knew you. Yep. And there's all kinds of people in the Bible. doesn't sound like God had a huge value on their life. Right. But I tell you what, when they were in their mother's womb, they had great value. <laughs> right. When they're innocent, they have great value. Hey, where's the outcry for these yep. babies? Right. Amen. If all lives matter, right? And so, they're, they're, so, so all of a sudden, these people are they're just... You know what it is? It's just self-love. It's self-love. I don't care if you're white, you're black, whatever. You love yourself. And so that will cause you to do harm to somebody else if it brings you gratification. If you're being wicked, if you've got a wicked heart, and we all have wicked hearts from time to time, and so we have to walk in the Spirit and do what the Bible says. And one thing the Bible says is flee this stuff. Yeah. Flee this, this congregation of evildoers. <clears throat> we need to, when we are afraid of something, we need to heed the warnings the best we can. We need to prepare for the worst. Hey, if you hear that there's some kind of nuclear threat, they're going to you know, send a nuclear bomb our way. It's okay to make some preparations, right? And the Bible talks about this. I love Proverbs 21, 31. You probably know it, but let's go turn there. Proverbs 21, 31. How do we respond to this fear mongering? People trying to get you to join in with the mob and do, join the crowd and do what everybody else is doing. What does the Bible say? Proverbs 21, 31. The horse is prepared against the day of battle. It's all right to prepare your horse. It's all right to have some weapons and some uh, horses for battle. But safety is of the Lord. Right? Ultimately, you're a Christian. Man, just trust the Lord. Don't listen to the fear mongering. Hey, you're going to die if you don't do this. Hey, if you don't wear a mask. Wait, do I wear the mask or do I not wear the mask? Because yesterday they said the mask is going to kill me. Today they said it's good. You know, I watched that guy with his mask and he's up and down and he's touching his face. And should I, should I stay away from him six feet, you know, or should it be 10 feet or what? The fear mongering, right? <laughs> Go ahead and protect yourself. But at the end of the day, you know, safety comes from the Lord. So what is the conclusion? You know, how do we keep people away from these mobs? How do we stop this kind of mob mentality from happening? Number one, the answer is that people fear the Lord. If they fear the Lord, right, they're not going to fear man. They can't be persuaded by fear mongering and, and those kind of tactics. If they fear the Lord, they're going to live right. They're going to resist those urges uh, of the flesh to just gratify their flesh. They're going to know, I can't do that because I love the Lord and I fear what God will do to me if I just give in to that. Right? People that have no fear of the Lord, my God doesn't, doesn't really care what they're doing probably, right? Because they have no fear for them. They may probably reprobate. We need to train our kids right. You know, train our kids to fear the Lord. They need to be afraid of punishment. They need to not just get away with doing whatever they want to do. They need to know that uh, you know, if I do such and such, uh, I am going to get in trouble. They need to be spanked whenever it's uh, uh, appropriate and taught to respect authority. Right. People today, I guarantee the majority of the people in those mobs, in those, uh, you know, that are looting and doing all that stuff, I bet you they weren't taught to respect authority. I bet you they weren't taught, you know, properly to fear the Lord. Then the other thing we need to do is Ecclesiastes 8, 11. Let's go there. Ecclesiastes 8, 11. It's along the same lines of fear in the Lord. The government has a responsibility in mob mentality. Exodus, uh, I'm not Exodus, Ecclesiastes 8, verse, start in verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of man is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil an hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. So don't stand around saying, well, you know, it is kind of nice. These guys went in to the department store and they got all these fancy clothes and they walked out and they got away with it <laughs> right no i know at the end of the day those who fear god you know it's going to be well for them right 
And the people that are, try, that are getting away with this shouldn't be getting away with this because the more they get away with it, the worse things that they're going to do. So sent this judgment needs to be executed speedily so that they won't do these things anymore. But the most important thing I want to take away from this message, okay, because I think everybody in here understands we want to stay away from the wickedness. We want to stay away from those who would plan to do evil or those who would just try to incite somebody to do uh, wickedly. More importantly is this. Those who fear the Lord, you know, we can kind of become a bit of a mob too in a good way. We can become a bit of a mob. Rather than joining a group of folks that are trying to gratify the flesh, we can become a sort of a, of a mob of people who encourage one another to deny the flesh, right? You know, that takes a, a group of people feeding off of each other. This is why we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together, because we need to be a mob, but not a mob that says, yeah, let's go gratify the flesh. Rather, we need to be a mob that says, no, 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 don't gratify the flesh. Amen. Fear the Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah. We need to, uh, instead of being a mob for hire, we need to be a part of a group that says, you know what? I want to freely give. Freely give the gospel. It was freely given to me. I want to freely give. Amen. Right? I don't take money for that. You know, I don't want to be bought off uh, to be able to do things because, you know, how can I get more uh, recognition? How can I get more fame? How can I rub shoulders with the, the senators and the mayors of our town and the governors and all this kind of stuff and be a big shot? Right. No, we need to encourage each other to say, forget all that kind of stuff. I don't care what the world says or what they're planning to give me or what they're going to take away from us. We give the gospel for free. Yeah. We preach against sin, right? right? Yeah. I don't care about your money. We're going to preach the truth of God. And we need to be kind of a mob that encourage each other to do that. You know, you know as well as I do, when, when you try to go soul winning on your own, it's hard. But when you get a bunch of people together saying, all right, you ready to do this? Let's go. And it fires you up. And next thing you know, you're out there doing it. And you're like, man, if I was by myself, I wouldn't be doing this right now. What is it? It's kind of mob mentality, right? But we use it, use, it, use it for good. Rather than being worked up by the fear-mongering and propaganda, we need to be part of a group that says, hey, I'm going to fear God more than man. And I don't care what happens. I don't care what kind of wickedness comes, what kind of persecution we get or whatever. I fear God rather than man. You know, man can't do anything to me except kill me, and then I go to heaven to be with the Lord. <laughs> and we need to feed off of that because, look, in the day of battle, it's hard to feel that way. I mean, whenever you're tempted, uh, it's hard to remember that, like, I'm just going to, you know, forsake this. Whenever somebody's persecuting, it's hard to say, I'm just going to stand fast. Some people might be easier than others, but you know what? Those people who are a little bit more bold like that and brave like that, you need to rub off on some of, some of us who aren't so much that way, right? We need to feed off of each other. We need to incite one another to not violence, right, but to good works. All right, let's pray. Right. Father, thank you for your word. And I thank you uh, just for what we see about uh, David and others and, and, of course, your hatred for uh, those who would just mob up together in, in purpose to go do wickedness. Lord, as you destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of your hatred for that kind of violence and that kind of uh, 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 just reprobate behavior, Lord, we know that you likewise hate the reprobate behavior that you see in our country. And I pray, Lord, that you just help us as believers to not get mixed up with any kind of a crowd, even if they claim to be religious or not, any kind of a crowd that would uh, motivate uh, and with, with uh, wicked motivations, Lord, to, to, to gather up together to do wickedness, whether it is to gratify the flesh and to just please the, the lust of the flesh, or whether it's just to receive money and lucre by those who would pay us off, or uh, whether it's just to believe the lies of the media and the uh, uh, propaganda. Lord, help us to say, I'm going to stick with God's word, and I'm going to encourage my brothers and sisters to do right and to live by according to God's word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.